Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Architecture Foundation's 2023 Book Week. I'm delighted to be joined by Pierre Paolo Tamborelli, uh, who is the um, author of a, a new book um, published by Mac called What Is Architecture About? Uh, this comes kind of hard on the heels of his publication on Bramante, which has been a, a sort of marathon effort over the, the course of kind of um, almost a, you know, five or ten years of work. Um, this new book from Mac is a much more pur purposefully, much more kind of scrappy and um, uh, deliberately sort of off the cuff uh, exercise. And it can relate to a series of talks which Pier Paolo uh, gave to the as a foundation course uh, within the, his uh, role as kind of chair at uh, the TU Wien, the Technical University in Vienna. Um, Pier Paolo, is that a fair characterization that, 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 that this is a sort of deliberately um, uh, a kind of scrappy um, antidote to the, the years of labor that you put into the Bramante book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the this book originates uh, rather simply. Uh, these are my lectures uh, that I do in Vienna, the Technical University, and um, and it's simply a requirement of the job to uh, to lecture uh, about the foundation of architecture uh, in the first semester of the first year. So these are lectures. Uh, that that are addressed to 500, 600 students per year. And, and it was really not my um, decision to, to do these. It's simply my job. And um, I thought it was interesting to simply address the grand basic question uh, in, a, in a bit of a rough way for, for people who have no introduction into the subject to just ask why, why do we think this architecture thing matters uh, and, and in which terms. And of course, uh, this came after spending, yeah, 15 years writing this thing on Bramante which is in a way a book of theory, but it's also a book of theory that in a way hides behind another character in a way. So it's not directly addressing theory architecture takes this detour. And I didn't want to, let's say, spend 15 years doing this thing with all this caution, all this... Uh, uh, yes, but, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then six months after, uh, very quickly provide, ah, you know, this is the thing. Uh, and uh, and it's pretty damn easy. Uh, and um, no, the thing is not damn easy. The thing requires the complex and contradictory maybe um, approach that I use for the other book. Uh, but you need to start somewhere. And, uh, and I think um, it's possible to approach uh, this subject in a very naive and intuitive way provided you know that you're doing it in the in that way so so the book that i can maybe show uh a little bit is this one and uh, and it's based on, on on eight lectures that are always composed as couples that are more or less dialectic, like one is this roof and wall. And there's always two pictures, one always pertaining to one of the category and one always pertaining to the other. Uh, and it's an attempt, first of all, to provide the students with a quite rich and I hope interesting visual material so that students can learn how to build their own um, image background. And these images are uh, used to uh, approach 
a few um, topics that I believe are, again, relevant for the discipline. And um, the lectures are like this. So they are PowerPoint presentation with this double uh, pictures. There are always uh, 50, 50 slides. So something in between 50 and 100 pictures because not always we have a uh, couple, but most of the time. And uh, uh, and together with that, I I wrote down these lectures. And in order to write them down, uh, I did some drawings, uh, which are basically drawings done while I was doing the PowerPoint. So they're drawing of PowerPoint slides. So they're not drawing en plein air uh, of, of the things, but they're, they're drawings of already of the image and um, and these were given to the students as kind of uh, reminders of what we were talking about and these drawings go together with a few uh, quotes uh, and they look like this uh, so there, there's some quotes some bibliographical references and then this uh, a uh, redrawing of the images that you saw in the PowerPoint. So this is exactly the same lecture that I show before. Uh, and that's it. So this is the book. The book is just a scan of all these A4 um, notebooks where I sketch these different um, images uh and construct a little bit of uh, links uh, or oppositions or alternatives or a uh, little annotation of uh the thing uh i i think it's a pretty simple book uh, in a way it's kind of semi comic uh, uh, introduction to to architecture um, which probably also depends a bit on the fact that my, not my predecessor, but my, my, the predecessor of my predecessor, I don't know if there's a word in English for that, uh, was um, Rob Creer. And, uh, and when I got his position in Vienna, I looked a bit into the work of, of Rob Creer, and there are always these... Um, like comprehensive publication, like like the 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 work of Creer has this uh, bizarre characteristic that every book contains also the book before. So so the last book is kind of this gigantic encyclopedia of what to do in architecture, uh, starting from elements, construction materials. And then you have how to make a round house, how to make a squarish house, and then how to make a round public space and a square public space, and then a round city and a square city and, and blah, blah, blah. So confronted with this really comprehensive production like this, co complete theory that, that goes through everything. And, and it's made of this very, how to say, specified sort of drawings in which uh, it looks like all contradictions can be um, solved uh, into a sort of kind of trans problematic, I, I don't know how to say, uh, architectural theory. Uh, I wanted to do something rather different. So to, to maybe use in, in a way drawings that are not so far away, but are much more contradictory, much more scruffy, much more uh, conflictual in a way, because I don't think I can provide these um, overarching theory. So this I think is more or less the, and, and I, I think I can show you yeah, some of the pages, but they are they are like this. And I, I think it's also important to to show 
well, my example uh, to show a practical case of how history of architecture can be appropriated in, in a very direct and to a certain extent non-problematic way. Like these, these are just things that we can learn about, that we can use in building up our personal culture and our disciplinary knowledge. Uh, and maybe the, the drawings are even more silly than what they could have been, uh, just to try to tell the students that they can actually do um, similar things. Yeah, I I think this is a short uh, a bit uh, the operation, and and to a certain extent, yes, it's also kind of liberation from the uh, kind of much more um structured and uh, annotated and uh, um complicated and deliberately complicated uh, nature of the book on Brahman. so this is then the, at the end of the book you have a, a kind of a miniature of the pictures that have been used and that's it Thank you, Pierre Paolo. Paolo. That's fantastic. The, the, I mean, it's it's um, obviously these are all. It's in a way, it's a catalogue of also of your obsessions, and there a lot of these are, are projects that you've. Well, there, there are things that you've written about here that one can see, and and that you know that the projects that have been a source of preoccupation for for San Rocco um, previously. Um, I mean, it's it feels like a, it's a very much a, a catalogue of. Um, projects in a rather conventionally defined term it's the, the these are very much um it's a succession of buildings you're showing certainly it's architecture def def defined kind of in terms of in terms of buildings it feels um and it's it's a uh, it's a, quite a canonical list um i mean i think the the the, the people you're you've been lecturing to uh are they 17 18 year olds and these buildings are ones that have 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 been um, been constructed kind of uh, before they before they were born. Generally, um, how how do you, how do you navigate that? Um, you know, the, you know, we obviously were at a moment when when the idea of the canon is being kind of challenged from a, a lot of different directions. How do how do how did you kind of address uh, the, those calls, or did you, did you not feel it was imperative to do so? Well, I think a canon, forget for a second which canon, but I, I think a canon is a useful tool if you are not trapped into the canon. Uh, so yes, this is implicitly canon. Uh, it's also very um, Eurocentric. Um, but it is because my culture is that and and these are the the only thing about which i i, I can talk with some rough uh i knowledge um i think the um the course is very clear in saying that this operation could be repeated with other um concepts like different framing so it's not necessarily uh so important to think of the difference in between wall and roof or language and action it can be something else it can be uh i don't know uh male and female it can be um rational and intuitive it it can be mm, communist and individualist uh whatever um but i think trying to provide a bit of a theory or, or or kind of logic of how to operate is not a bad idea i i think like on this thing of uh of i think theory is useful there's this uh very beautiful thing by tolstoy i think that says that um 
if we have to talk about um, baking and the theory of baking, the theory of baking will be that first you mix the ingredients and then you put it in the oven. And no one would ever bake something against this theory. Uh, and, and yeah, that's the notion of theory that I uh, refer to uh, in, in this. It's very loose, it's very simple, but, but it's useful. And, um, and the canon as well, I think uh, it's useful because the first thing that you can do when, when you have sort of a canon is that it becomes problematic. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I would think that this is also useful. Uh, it's also useful to, to have a set of um, things we can refer to, that we know wh what they are. And, uh, and exactly because of that, we can at a certain moment drop some and introduce some new and... Uh, I, I don't think a, a canon is uh, a like an obstacle. Uh, I, I I don't think we would be better without uh, a canon. Uh, then if the canon is this one or or that one, um, we can discuss the. Other thing I think we can say uh, about canon and about the Eurocentric canon for uh, architectural discussion is that we should also be realistic about the fact that this canon has been imposed uh, everywhere onto any um, institution of architectural education worldwide. So if you go to university in Paraguay or China or Mongolia, wherever, you end up being taught in 2023, you end up being taught some sort of um, international style, global uh, architecture tier that depends on, on European modernism, and because of that depends on uh, French theorists of the 18th century. And as a reaction depends on the Italian Renaissance and depends on uh, Roman architecture. Uh, this tradition, I think, is very clear. This tradition has been imposed worldwide through colonialism. Uh, and I think we cannot undo this tradition only with our good intentions. So the canon I'm talking about is the canon I know, uh, but it's also the canon that the civilization I belong to imposed with violence to other civilization. So we can discuss, we can also get rid of it, but I think we should know that this is the history and this is the condition that there's no real um, operative Chinese architectural tradition. Like uh, Chinese students go to Chinese university where Chinese uh, teachers teach them basically international style uh, architecture. And um, and this is a starting point for, for a reflection on, on this canon that I think we can question in many, way, many ways, but we cannot simply say, oh no, the canon should be another one without reflecting on all these uh, cultural and political um, conditions that determined the fact that that canon has a certain position. And uh, presumably this is a lecture series which you're going to continue giving over the course of the course of your time at TUV. Is, is, are you anticipating it's going to as an annual pro project which is going to develop or in some way, or do you feel it's a sort of? I I did this thing for two years, and in the first two years was more or less the same. Uh, also because the first year it there was COVID, so I didn't have any sense of reaction from the audience and second year was uh with the students in in the room uh this year uh is already a bit different 
So there's new lectures with different topics. I, I did so far the first lecture, public and private, and public and private was not part of, of the eight categories that, that, that are in the book. Uh, although you, you can easily, in a way, do it yourself by assembling the others, I think. Um, but uh, so I, I think the, the lectures will evolve uh, and the exercises that are related to the lectures are different uh, every year. Um, and I think at a certain moment, I will also get bored. So do something completely different. Uh, but still, I believe as an introduction to architecture, they are quite useful. So in a way, there are also reasons to repeat the the format. I, I think you, you should drop the format the moment you start to be too bored and, and they, they're not a challenge for you as a teacher anymore. And then they, I think, start to be sound plump and uh, uh, in a way a bit... Um, useless also to the students. Um, I, I remember professors that did uh, exactly the same lessons through their entire career. And um, and I think probably those lessons were also interesting at the beginning, but, but if you simply go on repeating over and over, uh, yeah, it loses a bit its grip. So, no. Uh, <laughs> So we, this might be the first volume of a uh, uh, yeah we might be getting further iterations I guess of if 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 um, if, if further lectures could have materialized over the years. But um, I have to say that the new lecture I did this year I didn't do the the little drawings. So maybe maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Well, um, congratulations. Uh, um, what is architecture about? Is published by Mac. Uh, excellent publisher with new recent engagement with um, with um, architecture um, and available in all book, good bookshops now. Pierre Palo Temporelli, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.